Since Nigeria's independence in 1960, Nigerian women have continued to struggle in the area of politics, even though they continue to achieve feats in other fields. The reality today is that even though women constitute about 49% of Nigeria's more than 180 million population, there are only a handful of women in political offices in the country, and we ask, Will the women be given a chance this time? Joining us to discuss this is Mabel Obo, the governorship candidate of ADC in the upcoming Edo election. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, <laughs> you, you, you wear a lot of hats. Before we came on this program, I was, you know, just you, you've been a presenter, a producer, a filmmaker, and a whole lot. What inspired you to take on this challenge at this time in a race that many is saying, what are we expecting? Well, first and foremost, you know, I would say my uh, party in African Democratic Party is the ideology. I never in my wildest dream thought I would ever get into politics. Yeah. How long have you been in politics? Uh, you would be surprised to say just seven months, you know, but I've been involved in the affairs of people, of human, you know, um, I would say, you know, Women suffering, women, children, and the underprivileged. I run an NGO as well, actually starting off for entertainers. And um, I've always been interested in helping out, you know, the less privileged. And I think that in this country, we just have the very rich. And I don't even think we really have you know, uh, middle, middle class, class anymore. The, even the working class are the ones that are struggling and they use the word hustling and we shouldn't be, and then you have the very poor and it shouldn't be that way. Okay, that is your, your, your desire to help. But yeah. there are some who would uh, dispute that because uh, we know that before you emerged as the candidate of your party, there was a candidate who stepped down as the governorship candidate. You were supposed to be the deputy. Some would say you were just being an opportunist. How would you react to that? <laughs> I, w I would laugh, you know. Um, the candidate, you know, um, stepped down for personal reasons and... Um, you know, had nothing to do with me. Um, obviously, I didn't put myself there and I didn't lobby for it. Uh, the party were actually approached by some women and youth group in Edo State. And when I was actually approached, at first I was a bit apprehensive. I said, no, um, it's always good to be on the, you know, on the background. And when I thought about it, I said, no. My people do want me. I'm from Edo State, you know, a true Edo woman proper, I say. Um, I'm from Mission Land. And um, Edo is considered the heartbeat of Nigeria, but that heart is bleeding. And rather than take the back seat, you know, like we all do, we talk a lot in Nigeria. We always verbally have the answers to everything and we don't come out. And it's, you know, it's going to be hard, challenging and all that and being a woman. But at the end of the day, I think there are a lot of women like myself out there, and women mm -hmm. that can do it. it, it the situation in Edo State at the moment, the big guns, the men, our fathers and our you know, um, husbands, I call them, they are busy fighting. Yeah, I mean, how prepared are you? Because many say this is not a fight for the faint-hearted. What do you think prepares you and gives you, you know, the, the strength is it your agenda? Is it your back? What exactly makes you think you can take on, you know, these gladiators and make a headway as a woman, particularly? Number one, I'm not alone. And I must say, you know, I come under the platform of African Democratic Party and they do have an ideology and they are backing me 100 percent on this. You know, and I'm chosen because they know I can do the work. This has got nothing to do with gender. We must you know, get that out of hand. I keep hearing all the time about, you know, you're a woman, you know, can you take it? For crying out loud, we women, we, we take care of our homes. We give birth to all these men in the first place and we raise them <laughs> yes, to what they do. are. You know, and then they say that we cannot. We're the home front people. We, if a, any home that a woman do not take care of properly, do not run. It's just like running a state. And apart from that, you know, 
I do have the experience. I do have an educational background for it. You know, apart from you know being um, a broadcaster and being in the film industry from the, you know the eighties, I have worked in the United Nations, worked with the British Embassy, I've travelled around the world, and I'm also a trained criminologist. You know, so. Um, I'm also a business you know, woman, an entrepreneur, and I run an NGO, so I manage people. And to be successful, you must know your onion. And I don't see any difference in running a state. And it's, you know, well, I'm not so just... Some would, some would also argue again that you've not been in politics a long time. How vast are you? Because beyond leadership, there's also the uh, conversation about politicking and managing you know, all the different egos that come with... In in order for you to do your job, you have to deal with other issues. How prepared do you think you are for it? Egos, women get to deal with that every day, <laughs> even in your home. You know, in quotes, if you don't tell your husband, he's oh, that one. You know, you know, you know how it is. You know, so yes, that is nature. You know, um, as I said, I'm well traveled. I've met different type of people. So how well do you know Edo politics? Because even from where I'm sat, sitting, it looks very complicated. So many parties, so many intricacies to consider. I, one of the first things when people, you know, talk about politics, and they say, well, you're not really grounded in politics. I'll say, I'd rather be called a reformer than a politician, though, you know, uh, it's politics that we're playing in Nigeria. Um, I am not into that, you know, political ideology. I am concentrating on my manifesto. The Edo people, they need help. And I'm more interested than, you know, trying to make somebody happy because I'm just going to rob their ego and make them feel good and, and so on. No. So a woman, you know, um, should realize when they're going into this, the agenda do not count. It's the strength that they have. It's what they have upstairs and what they have to offer that's more important. And I have got a lot to offer in those states. Well, whether we like it or not, being a woman is a factor in Nigeria. We don't have, I mean, we can count on one finger how many female governors we have had uh, in this country. So a, a little away from Edo politics, let's talk about uh, talking broader terms women in politics in Nigeria. What is your, coming out as a woman, I'm sure you've faced a lot of challenges, but what would be your unique perspective? You, you did allude to the fact that it's beyond being a woman. It has to do with, you know, uh, what is your perspective on the conversation around this? I think where the real issue is, it's with women. You know, women feel um, already defeated. I think that's the, you know, the, the point. Um, for me, you know, being here today, I didn't lobby, you know, I am a hard worker, you know, I work hard and I, and I bring out my, all my potentials. I mean, at the end of the day, there were a lot of men, you know, you know, there, but they chose me to come out and fight those two giants that say they are in Edo State. So, but what we know is, it's high time people start respecting intellects. You know, it's got nothing to do with gender. So women, I, but that's actually part of my campaign, to make women come out. There are a lot of intelligent women out there. There's nothing like a man can do it better, but I am not a feminist. I don't believe in that. You know, I believe in, you know, let the woman do the I own. mean, the interpretations we give to the conversation about feminism is a whole different hour of conversation. So yes. let's just focus on, you know, um, what you're bringing to the table. I understand that um, your party um, election campaign committee will have more of women uh, in it as well as other um, um, people but I think 60% are going to be women uh, what informed this decision do you think is it to give more energy to your pursuit or is it to you know push the agenda that women inclusiveness is mandatory if we must grow uh, politically it's so I must say that it's not just only women um, I would say that it, like for example uh, you know our national chairman you know, Chief Rafa wants. He's a really uh, well enlightened guy, well traveled guy. And ADC is actually full of, you know, intellects, people that want to make change. You know, that's what we want to, you know, to do. Um, you know, so w 
there's, we're all an inclusive party. You know, we care for the disabled people, the elderly. These are the people that, that are ignored in the society. So the youth, women, disabled, the elderly, you know, these are people that are more vulnerable. And um, there's really that room for us there to protect them. And that's why, you know, we are doing this. So it's not just a matter of, you know, ADC parties. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually um, um, uh, um, intrigued enough to want to ask you about some of your vision outlined uh, in this. Uh, but I, I want to talk about the conversation around opportunity. Sometimes we hear women, uh, people say that women are not given opportunity uh, to, and you, you, men don't ask most times for opportunity. They often go to get what they want. So is it truly a question of opportunity for women in politics or it's more of something else? It's the women that are not pushing hard enough. That's, you know, that relaxed attitude. There's this thing in our society that the men are there to provide and then we should just take a back seat. So we should be teachers, you know, and look after the home front. Yes, that is very, very true. We should look after, you know, the home front. But, you know, the world is like a village. Now things are easier managed than before. I think that women should come out. You know, I don't really believe that... Um, you know, the men are stopping the women at all. You know, okay. nobody stopped me. All I Sexually. did was to show myself and they said, okay, fine, you know, you're a talent. You can do this, you can do that. And that's one of the things I want to do is to enlighten women. You know, please come out, come out, show yourself. Don't take the back seat. You know, the time has gone beyond, you know, when women depend on men. So how has been the response among women? I know you work with a lot oh, of them. Yeah. Have you got, because sometimes you hear, say, oh, women are not supporting themselves. That's why. Yeah. What is the support base like for you? Very great. Absolutely super. The fantastic thing about it, it you know, when campaigning, they do stay they not just the women and not just the youth. You know, I say I'm a mother. It's time that the women come out, you know, to really, you know, save Edo State. And, you know, when things are going wrong, we are more sensitive. So the, the giants are fighting, our sons, our fathers are fighting. It's time for the women to come in, you know, and repair. And, fix and not only the, the men, sorry, the women are supporting me, the men are saying, yeah, let's give you a woman a, man a chance. You have your running mate. Yes, 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 yes. You know, he's a doctor, Dr. Ruben uh, Odokpai. He's a, 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 an Edo man. And he's very, very happy. I mean, he's actually one of my greatest fans. Supporters. He, yeah. All right, let's talk about your vision. Uh, among some of the things I'm looking at here is job creation, massive industrialization. Talk about that because we know that um, some of the issues that are being raised in Edo State, we have pensioners, we have protests, I would put it on the news all the time, um, and then we have a, a debt of roads, infrastructure in certain areas. How do you plan to industrialize a dose state should you get the opportunity? Agriculture, 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 job, job, job. You know, um, you know we thought about it and said, a dose state it's really a blessed land. What, we, what is happening in Edo State is that people are not focusing. You know, all, everything is there for us, like every other part of Nigeria. We're not tapping in into our resources. Instead, so people are pushing more into oil and all that. You know, we are farmers. And we find this cocoa rubber, you know, yam, you know, all sort of food stuff. The land is fertile. So we're going to use that first and foremost. You know, while... It's not just the old method of agriculture. We're going to look at food processing. We're going to, you know, look at organic, you know, farming, greenhouses. So much more. You talked yeah, about a season. lot of stuff. We're, we're, yeah. we're, um, I wish we had more time for you to enumerate. It's been a delightful pleasure talking with you and on you the too. program. Thank <laughs> you very <laughs> much. And all the best. Thank you. In the race. You know, I'm, I hope I'll be back here again to say... Soon, you know, as the fine. governor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the program. All right, we will take a short break. And when we return, I'll be giving my take expectantly on women participation in politics. Do stay with us. And 69 lawmakers elected into the Ninth National Assembly. Only 18 are women. 
seven in the Senate and 11 in the House of Representatives in a country of over 200 million people with a population of women even more than that of the men. Now, since 2006, Nigeria's national gender policy highlights women's right to equality in economic, social and political life with provisions to increase women in elected and appointed positions to 35%. That is yet to happen. Some impediments to this have been identified, among others, to include patriarchy, political and nocturnal meetings, violence in elections, and of course, women's economic situation. We all know that inclusivity in political participation is a fundamental aspect of modern democracy. Would it be safe then to conclude that we are where we are because we refuse to include women as integral part of our decision making in governance? While we ponder on that, please be reminded that a bird never flies on one wing. Nigeria's development should be a collective responsibility and for us to truly inch towards such sustainable strides, we must ensure equal representation of women and men seated at the decision-making table. Women must not relent in pushing for that seat. As always, I appreciate your kind attention while the program lasted. Until I see you next time, please do your utmost. Be the best reflection of what is good in this country. My name is Felicity Ese Wike. See you next time.